Carol. Hello and welcome to week 11 of Friday Football Fever. I'm Jeff Jones and guys for the second week in a row, we've made history here on Fever. To the first time in my knowledge, we've had the same exact matchup with the same two teams as our game of the week twice in one season. Back in mid-October, we had we featured Lano versus Lago Vista as our game of the week. Those were the top two teams in their district, 13-3A. Now Lano came out on top in that matchup, but both teams remained undefeated since then until now. A rematch was set in the fourth round of the playoffs. I feel like we kind of underestimated them a little bit. We're a pretty solid team at this point. A lot better than we were when we played them the first time. We just can't underestimate them this time, and we definitely won't. They're, they've made it four rounds in the playoffs. They want to play us, and I'll tell you this, our kids want to play them. This has turned into a rivalry. They've beaten us, and we've beaten them. We've played each other on homecoming. Our, you know, our kids are getting pretty familiar with each other, and with that comes a little bit of a rivalry feel. And it's pretty rare that you get to play a true rival twice in the same year, much less for the regional championship. Let's get moving with our QC Kinetics Game of the Week. You guys know I like to call this game the Battle of the O's, Lano, Lago. I promise it didn't catch on at some point, but what's already called on now are rushing scores of all types. Vikings Lance Powers powered in for the short yardage score. When the Yellow Jackets get the ball back, well, there was nothing short about this. An 80-yard sprint sounds like a punishment to me, but I'm willing to bet Case Kirkendall had a smile on his face the whole time. That smile probably faded a bit on this play. Watch Lago Sam Hurley with a fantastic strip. That is exactly how they teach you how to do it. Fast forward to the fourth, Lano trailed by two with just 35 seconds left when Kirkendall worked his way back into the end zone off the left side. So it was down to this, down by six with a chance to tie or win the game. The Lago Vista pass was intercepted. Lano remains undefeated, the Yellow Jackets win. 31 to 26 is the final score. So guys, you have seen the highlights, you know the final score, but in a game like this and in an environment like this, that doesn't tell nearly all the story. I'm gonna welcome in my good friend, Emily Jean Greco. And Emily, I, I hope you don't mind. I'm gonna let the people behind the curtain a little bit. When this game ended and you came back from your on-field interview with uh, Coach Green from Leno, you came in the live truck where I was working, you slammed the door and you said, now that's a game of the week. It was. It, this is what you expect out of the game of the week, Jeff. You know, we've seen a lot of blowouts, unfortunately, this season for our game of the week. We haven't had much luck, but tonight it was to a point. I want to say we're in like low 40s, maybe even high 30s. I was sweating at one point. I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much going on. It came down to the final second. And I want to talk about Lano season because it has been a historic season for Lano. They haven't gone undefeated since 1997. It's been their first district title since 1997. They've never made it to the fourth round of the playoffs and tonight they won it. They remain undefeated. Case Kirkendall continues to be the MVP and coach Matt Green said he is happy that this one is finally over because it was a battle getting this far. I'm ecstatic. I mean, I'm telling you, but those last 20 seconds were awful. That's the most miserable 20 seconds of my coaching career. Hats off to Lago, who played an amazing football game, uh, but also hats off to our kids who battled and scrapped and fought. And I'll tell you what, that was two good teams going at it, and we won it, we earned it, and uh, again, congratulations to Lago Vista, but awesome job by our kids in Lano. When I had a chance to speak with you earlier in the week, you were telling me how historic this season is for you. Your first time making it to the fourth round of the playoffs, now you win it. Uh -huh. Just talk about all the history you've made so far this season. Well, this team has done so much. They won the first district title since two, uh, 1997, which was unbelievable. They then turn around and, and we go to the third round of the playoffs, which matches only two other teams, the 73 and I think the 07. I'll get them mixed up. But that matched it. Last week is further than any Lano team's ever gone, and certainly tonight with this victory, we have accomplished some things that, that has never, ever been done in Lano. Uh, it's a tribute to our kids, our coaches, and I'm going to tell you, to our, our community, what a crowd tonight. And, and the, I just tell you, the force behind these kids is unreal. I, f I feel like we're all living a little bit of a dream in Lano, Texas. Oh, well, Coach, congratulations. You guys continue to win. We're looking forward to continue to cover you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate y'all being here. Y'all have a great evening. Thank you. 
So Jeff, they're living a dream in Lano, Texas. And you know what? As a reporter, I'm living a dream because after that win, coach ran up to me, gave me a hug. He was saying I was a good luck charm. I was like, that is a dream as a reporter. I'm like, I did something right. I did something right, Central Texas. There we go. You did something right. Lano did plenty of things right. And Lago Vista did a lot right as well. As we were talking about earlier, these were the top two teams in District 13-3A, the smaller divisions in our state, 4A on down. They're in the playoffs now. The bigger ones, though, 5A and 6A, are still playing. And speaking of the 